The success of Donald Trump throughout this process will in part be a function of the opposition up against him. So I want to take a little tour um, of, of the kind of people who Donald Trump is, who are opposing Donald Trump. We're going to start with Bernie Sanders. During that debate about the stimulus package, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the some of the schemes for unemployed people compared to Britain does look fairly generous. This was something that Republicans in the Senate were upset about. They were worried um, that if you gave people $600 a week, that could end up being more money than they earned when they were in employment. Um, so they saw that as both moral hazard and you know, just unacceptable. Um, this is Bernie Sanders arguing why that's a stupid idea. Republican colleagues are very distressed. They're very upset that somebody who's making 10, 12 bucks an hour might end up with a paycheck for four months more than they received last week. Oh my God, the universe is collapsing. Imagine that. Somebody who's making 12 bucks an hour now, like the rest of us, faces an unprecedented economic crisis with the 600 bucks. It's Bernie very charismatically arguing why, uh, you know, the lowest paid getting $20 extra than they might have got in their low paid job should not be one of our concerns when we're going into or as we're entering this, this, this crisis as we're getting through it. Um, but obviously, in terms of the delegate count, it looks more likely that it's not going to be Bernie, but Biden, who is the candidate to face Donald Trump. And his interventions haven't been quite as articulate. Why doesn't he just act like a president? That's a stupid way to say it. You know, guess, Donald Trump really was asked. Wishing... On... Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I probably best I don't. I just, I just can't figure the guy. It's like, it's, I don't know, it's like watching a yo-yo. I shouldn't have said it that way. It's like watching... It feels that way. I want to ask... I want to... <laughs> oh, my God. Do you know what I'm saying, Aaron? Watching that second video, it's not, it's not Biden who you want to be the candidate, is it? Well, no, of course not. And, and I, I want to say, too, I'm somebody who, you know, I was very annoyed most of the campaign because of this enormous, I mean, the Warren campaign was this horrible role in the race. And, and people, I think, actually, because we are in our bubbles, we're very naive about the appeal of Joe Biden. Uh, we can, you know, dislike him for all the obvious reasons. We, you know, Iraq war and everything else. But he has a popularity. And he does have a certain kind of old school sort of political appeal. And, and, and I didn't, you know, it, up until Iowa, I actually thought it was really a Bernie Biden race. And even when you watch those whole clips, I mean, he really loses the plot and it's a problem. I think there's other times where he's just used to a different mode of political communication that, you know, people, uh, you know, certainly online are not going to relate to or understand at all. But the problem is, is like, he can dominate a Democratic primary with older voters, but in a national election, older voters are going to Donald Trump. Mm. Uh, so, you know, you, you know, just even demographically, there does come this element of you do need, it's been proved, you know, the Bernie coalition is not enough yet. And that's a major strategic problem for us that we have to work institutionally to overcome. And at the same time, it's big enough and powerful enough and significant enough that it needs to come out for the Democratic nominee. And again, I'm just speaking objectively here. I, I just don't see it. I, I would be shocked if, I, I'm sure there's conversations going on right now about you know a pinch hit with Cuomo. Uh, I want Bernie to still run aggressively. Uh, I think Bernie would in fact be a very formidable uh, candidate against Donald Trump. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, you know, it, this election has proven you know the enormous power of of cable news and and uh, and and the democratic leadership in signaling uh, what is uh, permissible in terms of electability and and they coalesced around Biden and that convinced a lot of voters. You mentioned Cuomo there, who many of our audience won't have heard of. He's the governor of New York, um, but he has he has come to prominence like in in this period because obviously he's the governor of the state that's been hardest hit. And I think you were saying probably before we go live that if if the Democratic establishment were to try and replace Biden with someone, and it does, you know, it, it is seeming increasingly just you know not plausible to put that guy up to be president. Um, yeah. it, it could be someone like Cuomo, but 
I want to go to a clip of him in a moment because it's also, you know, a key element of the of the political story uh, in terms of coronavirus in the United States, which is this battle between certain states and the federal government, or in this case, between Cuomo, the governor of New York, and Donald Trump, the president of the United States, obviously, um, about ventilators and the access of states to ventilators. FEMA says we're sending 400 ventilators. Really? What am I going to, what am I going to do with 400 ventilators when I need 30,000? You pick the 26,000 people who are going to die because you only sent 400 ventilators. So the, the, the row there is, is, is twofold. So one, Cuomo is, is demanding that Trump send more ventilators from the federal stockpile of ventilators. Trump saying, you know, it doesn't need to send many. And the other is that he wants Trump to call in the Defense Production Act, which means that the presidency gets to, you know, demand that business turns its operations into producing ventilators. Before I go to you, Michael, I want to look at Donald Trump's response to this call from Cuomo. This was in that same phone in with Sean Hannity last night on Fox News. I have a feeling that uh, a lot of the numbers that are being said in some areas are just bigger than they're going to be. I don't believe you need 40,000 or 30,000 ventilators. You know, you go into major hospitals sometimes, they'll have two ventilators. And now all of a sudden they're saying, can we order 30,000 ventilators? So, look, it's a very bad situation. We haven't seen anything like it. But the end result is we got to get back to work. And I think we can start by opening up certain parts of the country, you know. I mean, fuck it now. I mean, one, obviously, there, there are many people who are going to be vulnerable to coronavirus in New York State who will, you know, find that horrific to listen to. On the other hand, I mean, that is a ready-made campaign advert to, you know, get rid of Donald Trump, isn't it? I mean, if it, we're going to see some really shocking scenes over the coming weeks. And it doesn't seem like Donald Trump, you know, has some grand political master plan when he's calling up to Fox News and saying people won't actually need ventilators. I mean, because pe people will need ventilators. This isn't something that's up for debate. No, I mean, and it's, and it's, a, it is a, it is a test between how resilient his cocoon is uh, versus this really serious objective reality. Though I, I do think, you know, there's a lot of, um, distorted bubbles in American politics. Andrew Cuomo substantively is awful. And I was talking earlier, I think about the Medicaid cuts and public hospitals he's worked to close down. There's definitely some other kind of, you know, sort of corruption questions that have floated around his administration. Uh, and then on the other hand, and particularly in the scenario Aaron outlined, where we're going, where, where it actually, there's this some degree of normalcy in the sense of, a president f's up astronomically. The opposition wins. Uh, you know, Andrew Cuomo could certainly carry the ball across that field. You know, he knows how to do this, uh, and you know, just on that sort of objective level, from the perspective of the left and from the perspective of policy, uh, this is an atrocious, atrocious candidate. Um, but from the perspective of, you don't care about it but you actually would like to sort of run a serious campaign, uh, it seems to me just sort of an obvious play uh, in terms of a pinch hitter. Those of us who care about policy and the democratic forces of this country need to keep fighting hard uh, for Sanders. Uh, but I would think from the perspective of the sort of, you know, democratic establishment or whatever term we're using, I, I you know, it, 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 it plays to, it, it plays to all of their, feelings about politics, which is they basically just want somebody who can go on TV with Donald Trump and, you know, be like, hey, you're an asshole. And, you know, Cuomo can do that. So <laughs> I, I, I'm sure I would be shocked if it is not being considered. And I'm sure Andrew Cuomo is considering it.